up to this point, we've analyzed most of our binary search tree algorithms in terms of h, the height of the tree. But we haven't determined what h is in terms of n, the number of input elements. In this screencast, we'll do that analysis and make some other comments on binary search trees. So to recap, we've looked at a traversal procedure for traversing a binary search tree and found it to be theta of n. And then for all of the querying operations, searching minimum, maximum, successor, and predecessor, and for the two modification operations, insertion, deletion, we said it's big O of h, where h is the height of the tree. But what is h in terms of n? We want to know, in terms of the amount of data we have, what how long things take. We don't know necessarily what the tree looks like. It's kind of hidden in the you know in the black box of the BST class that we're using or whatever. Uh, so we need to have some idea of what we might expect h to be. And this leads us to the expected height of a tree. First, let's look at the worst case. I think you probably have guessed the worst case is a tree that looks like this or it can branch in different directions. It doesn't matter. So suppose you have, uh, you know, you insert A and then you insert B and then you insert C. So every time you insert, you search for its position. You know, insert D. D is bigger than all of those. You can see inserting in sorted order would cause problems. That would lead to a order of N for processing anything. It's just like a linked list. But what about the expected case? Well, if we assume that there's uh, the input data is randomly distributed, basically that any permutation of the keys is equally likely and uniformly distributed, then you can prove that it is big O of log n. In particular, there's a proof by Donald Knuth, who wrote the four, I think it's four volume series, maybe five, Art of Computer Programming, starting back in the 1970s. It's the major original work of algorithms. And he has a proof in there that it's, it's really about 1.386 log n comparisons are needed in a typical tree if it's randomly constructed. Uh, so, in other words, it's going to be 38.6% um, worse than the best possible tree in terms of number of comparisons made if you assume random distributed the input. This is just assuming you've built a tree with random insertions. No one's yet been able to figure out how to analyze when you mix deletions into the mixture there. It is also possible to build trees in advance. You're given the keys in advance. You can imagine, of course, you know, in this situation here, you would just sort the keys, and then you would pick the middle value of the keys, and you would you know, insert it into the tree first, and then you'd want to get the middle value of the left half, the middle value of the right half, and so each of those subtrees recursively would be as uh, optimal as possible uh, because you wanted to have just the complete full binary tree that I started with this uh, topic series with gives us the logarithmic height. We don't really have to do that and we don't always have the luxury of having all the keys in advance. They're going to come and go and so we're going to have to rely on this expected value of big O of log n for the performance of binary trees and realize that when we get data in certain weird orders like uh, sorted uh, order that we can get trees that the performance degenerates. In a few weeks we're going to look at balanced binary trees particularly in the context of the chapter on red black trees and what are called 2-4 trees and these are trees that have operations that keep them from getting very far out of balance uh, more towards this kind of tree than this kind of linear tree. So that concludes our topic of binary search trees. We will return to binary search trees in several topics in the form of balanced binary trees.